And again, I want to thank you very much, Patrick, for uh, for joining us. This is going to be a lot of fun, I think. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. So um, uh, probably folks know you from either AnimeCons.com or Twit, but uh, let's just kind of go back. What got you started in anime? Uh, well, the first anime I saw, I was probably five or something, and I saw mm. Battle of the Planets, and I thought it was awesome. Nice. And I remember I used to have some just some paints because i was a kid that parents gave me paints and i'd go find rocks that were shaped like the triangle and <laughs> paint it to look like the the god phoenix or whatever they called it in battle of the planets wow and i would i made my own toy out of rocks and, <laughs> but you know I, I liked voltron and transformers and stuff but then uh in college I uh, was into Star Trek and more live action things. Mm -hmm. But then after college, I was watching a sci-fi channel and they showed Eria. Yes. Which I, I was like, oh my God, this show is amazing. <laughs> and I had to find that. I had to find more. Mm. And I went to Tower Records and all these VHS tapes. So I got Eria and it, the whole series cost me like $90, $30 <laughs> yep. per VHS tape. <laughs> and then uh, they had a Gotcha Man OAV, and I was like, oh, my God. And yeah. that just started me down. Then I discovered, oh, wait, if I get a DVD player, they're so much cheaper. And so <laughs> I then I discovered anime on DVD, mm. had a lot of friends through there, ended up uh, – one of my friends, Liz, we, we decided, oh, let's go to the Transformers convention, BotCon. Mm -hmm. I had a great time, but it was my first real convention. Mm. Uh, the following year, we decided, oh, let's go to Anime Expo instead. So much better. <laughs> and that just started me down the dark path of anime conventions. I had to find more, and I, I couldn't find a list of them, so I started my own list. There we go. Um, you know, I mean, AnimeCons.com has always been one of these sort of amazing things where I think every fan goes to that thing where they're, where they're like, I, I've gone to a con or two cons. There must be more cons out there. Why doesn't anyone have a list? Oh, there it is. Yeah. There, there it all is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what was the um, sort of uh, uh, initial plan for the site? Was it just, you know, we're going to list every single con? Was, it, was this a certain depth you wanted to go into? Uh, well, originally, I just wanted a list of conventions so I would be able to keep track of what, what ones are coming up and, you know, where I might want to go. And... I started it uh, on my own site. It was in part of adequate.com way back mm. in 2001. But there were only a dozen conventions in the US that year. A little bigger and, now. Yeah. And then, so I thought, okay. And then a few more get added, a few more get added. Uh, I ended up getting animecons.com to dedicate a whole site to it. And when I started, you know, it was still just. I don't know, 75 conventions. <laughs> but then 2003, 2004, it just shot up, and mm -hmm. it's been increasing ever since, and now there's hundreds of conventions in the U.S. alone <laughs> every year. <laughs> and so it takes more and more of my time. Mm, I can imagine that. And then somewhere along the way, uh, a few years back, I got tired of people submitting things that weren't anime conventions, trying to get mm -hmm. them listed. Because, oh, well, we have an anime video room. Like, well, <laughs> you're still not really an anime con. You're a sci-fi con with a video room. Mm -hmm. And people would get so upset that they couldn't be listed. So I made fancons.com just as a place to put all those. Nice. And so now I've been listing everything. <laughs> which it was hard enough before. Now well, so I know I don't have everything. Well, and it's, I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, one of the great things is going on to AnimeCons.com and getting guest lists and all that kind of stuff. Where do you get that from? Is that literally just going to their site? I've gone to every website for every convention. Holy guacamole. Their guest page. Uh, and then I, I scan down the list, and there's thousands of guests in the database now. Mm -hmm. And I scan for ones that I know I have in the database, and I add those first. And then I look, okay, who's new that's not in the database? And a lot of times I skip over it just because I'm mm. not in the mood to enter <laughs> a thousand new people. 
<laughs> uh, someday, maybe I'll have some automated way to create them, but I, I like having not just their name, but some sort of little bio or photo, some other information, not just, yeah. Otherwise, I, if like John Smith is a guest at this convention and John Smith is here, how do I know they're the same John Smith? At least in bio. And yeah. I think after thousands of guests, I've only got two guests that have the same name. Really? Yeah. At least that I know of. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yeah, and and it's and one of the other problems too is you know you list a, a con and they'll get you know twenty eight actors who had one scene in Stargate Atlantis. Yeah, and it's like okay, great, you know. And the other thing I've been seeing pop up more and more is cosplay guests. Somebody who's uh, yeah. in costumes for two years and now they they're listed as a guest at some local con. Like, <laughs> ugh, <laughs> my time to enter them. Maybe they'll go to a lot later. Maybe this is a one-off and they'll never go to a con again as a guest. Yeah. And the, the other thing that I've noticed recently is people listing cars as guests. Really? They've got the Ectomobile. They've got the Batmobile. They've got the DeLorean wow. Back to the Future. And I've <laughs> decided, no, I'm not even good. Because there's so many people that have those. Yeah. That... Your TARDIS is not the same as your TARDIS. I can't list it the same. So I'm just not going to list vehicles. I have to draw the line somewhere. That's amazing. You know, I went to a small anime con. It was kind of the first um, year of it. It was in Roanoke. It was, you know, maybe 100 people total. And they had a um, Mystery Machine and a Jurassic Park Jeep. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess it's, it's a big thing. That's interesting. What are some of the other kind of surprising trends overall in terms of uh, of stuff that's showing up now? Um, I, I've seen voice actors come and go. Mm, yeah, uh, I, like back in the day, you, you'd have some voice actors who were very popular in the shows at the time, and then they kind of fade off, and new ones come up, and then they fade off. So I've seen those trends. Mm. Um, and, and like just a few years ago, Vic Mignogna was it every convention and now it's kind of dropping off he still goes to a lot but uh there's others that are starting to rise up and uh, th like the last year or so the sailor moon voice actors have been incredibly popular mm -hmm. and that's yeah. because the, the resurgence of sailor moon with it being re-released sure yeah that, that that makes a lot of sense it, it feels to me too like yeah, the convention circuit is really where the voice actors get their attention and get their fans. Yes, yeah. And, and they, uh, a lot of them love going to conventions just to be able to meet the fans. And I actually get a lot of emails from voice actors saying, how can I get invited to more conventions? Interesting. And I, I, I've got some ideas on how I can uh, change the site around so that they can make it known that they want to go to conventions. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, yeah, that uh, as somebody who's planned conventions, I know that a lot of convention planners are lazy. And if these voice actors just reach out and say, hey, I want to be a guest at your convention, nine times out of 10, the con will say, actually, yes, we need guests. I don't feel like looking for some. Why don't you come on over? <laughs> Interesting. So let's talk about that. So um, how did you first get started organizing cons? Uh, the first convention, the first anime con I went to was Anime Expo in 2000, mm. and it was 2001. I had already decided I need to be involved in this, <laughs> and I was living in Newton, Massachusetts at the time. And there were there was one convention in New England, and it was a small convention called Mika Con up in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. They had mm -hmm. in 2001 they had 330 people. <laughs> And then the the Hobby Star Corporation that runs um, the Canadian Anime Expos, which mm. are not the California Anime Expo, <laughs> but that organization, Hobby Star, came to Boston and ran a comic, sci-fi, and anime con, and it was terrible. Oh. Uh, they didn't go back, but uh, one of my friends, Adam, and I were sitting there the last day of the con saying, we could do this. We could do better. Mm. And so... Uh, we got the ball rolling, met up with some friends over hamburgers, and uh, decided to start our own convention. And we thought, oh, this is going to be a small little thing. We, I mean, we're in Boston, so we can probably double what the New Hampshire convention got. 
So we were thinking like, oh, 750 people. But over 2,000 people pre oh. Oh, 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 oh. And uh, 4,110 ended up showing up. <laughs> but, along with the fire marshal who said, yeah, you have to start turning people away. Yeah, totally. But anybody who hadn't pre-registered had to go home. Wow. And we had sob story. People drove from Pennsylvania. It's like, <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I wish you pre-registered. Um, but... Wow. Yeah, so that was Anime Boston in 2003. And cool. now Anime Boston is over 25,000 people. Huge. One of the largest in the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm still involved with it, but I, 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 did, I was the chairman for a couple of years and then decided I have to step back because yeah. it consumed my life. I, did, I had no personal life. <laughs> yeah. So what were those steps that first year? Like, like how did you go about like organizing, getting the financing, all that good stuff? Uh, well, we were lucky with the financing. Some of us put up some cash, just we paid for flyers out of our own pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we put up cash just for de deposits on uh, hotel space. But uh, because pre-registrations came in quickly, uh, we were able to get a lot of the startup money back. Nice. Fairly quickly. And, and they were coming in so fast, we could just go off the startup money. And that's very unusual for a convention because usually you don't get it back until at the door if mm. you're lucky. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's where financing came from. We actually approached a local sci fi convention, but they turned us down. Uh. Thought, oh, it's not going to amount to anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then the first year, we had more people than they did. So. <laughs> Well, it's funny because you know sci-fi cons used to be the thing, um, and and now they're they're still there and they're kind of the, the venerable cons, but it's the anime cons that are really taking over. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so yeah, we we started with a group of a handful of friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we were all uh, friends through the anime on DVD uh, forum back in gotcha. the day. Yeah, and uh, so we'd have Boston area meetups because Chris Beveridge, who ran the site, was also in Boston. Oh, gotcha! And so uh, a, a lot of us just we had different uh, areas of expertise, and so somebody who's more familiar with how finances work could handle the treasury. Somebody who's better at promotion, like, could handle that. I did web programming, so I did the website for the first few years. There we go. And uh, so we just split it up. And as it grew and more people joined in, we could uh, push off some of the responsibilities to other people. Nice. What were your kind of goals for that first year? Like, like yeah, other than size, like what, what were you trying to, to get in? Well, we, we didn't really have much of a goal except to just put on a good convention. <laughs> and we certainly didn't have a size goal. We figured, well, as long as we get the enough people to be able to uh, pay for our expenses, that'd be great. Um, we certainly didn't aim for 4,000 people. <laughs> but we went to other events and promoted, and uh, we're trying to get the word out and let everybody know, hey, there's a new convention in Boston. And uh, it was because the one in New Hampshire didn't happen a second year. We were the only one in New England. Helps. So we just wanted to get the word out. And... That was our main goal is just let everybody know about us and then make sure they have a good time. Gotcha. And that, what were you reacting against? Like, you know, we've all had bad con experiences, but like, what was bad about that experience where you're like, you're never again? Uh, bad about that particular year? Yeah. Or just the experience of starting a convention. No, it's about, about that, that year where, where you're like, okay, everything went wrong. We can do better. Every year, there's something that just goes wrong. Sure. Uh, and we improve it and fix it for the next year, but then something else happens. Uh, the first year, I think the biggest disaster, well, uh, there was the amount of people, which, yeah. I mean, it's a happy accident, but we had to <laughs> deal with the hotel just being packed full of people. But uh, I think the, the biggest disaster people remember, other than the crowds, is uh, the masquerade. Really? Uh, the, it was not organized very well that first year. The mm -hmm. the person who had taken it on uh, was in over her head. And uh, that became clear when the 
right before the masquerade, she decided to go off and have waffles. <laughs> And nobody knew where she was. Oh. She started to line up, and it's like, where is she? And she strolls in later, and after we've started organizing people into groups, like, where were you? Oh, I wanted waffles. So, and, and then the the entry forms were jumbled. So, pe- the Adam was doing the MC. He had no pronunciation guide. Uh, he'd have the forms, but the people lined up backstage were in a different order. Oh. So he had to scrap that and then just ask the people. As they came up, who are you? And what did you skit? And then he'd go out to the podium and announce them. And while they're performing, the next group would come up and he'd ask them. So he figured it out on the fly, but it, it was rough. And uh, we've had that, that masquerade video would never be shown. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the next year we fixed it. We brought in somebody who'd worked with Anime Expo's masquerade. And it was a great success. Mm. Very and cool. over the years, we've had big disasters. Like mm. um, the the one most people remember in recent memory is 2008. Uh, the registration system was redone in house, and people waited in line for like eight hours. Oh. And it was we all felt terrible. And that mm. was on Friday. Saturday, we fixed it and reduced the uh, times somewhat by having the staff enter the data. Because mm. we realized the bottleneck was people who were entering their own data. They weren't familiar uh, with the form. Yeah. So it would take a while, and it just multiplied. Mm. Uh, but the next year, we outsourced registration. The longest line was, like, I think it took 20 minutes for somebody to get through once the doors opened. And Not then bad. after that, it was walk-in. And we've stayed with that system ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever been to a con, maybe Anime Expo, where the wait was that that short and that's pretty impressive yeah yeah and it was one of the best decisions we made was to outsource the registration mm, that makes sense yeah i was at a uh, actually that same small con um where i i discovered there's this huge long line for people to get in and i discovered that uh they were checking how, how was it um they had one laptop for all registration oh god um, and they gave it to somebody who'd never used the laptop before, and they had some custom built tool, and nothing it, even better. It was not alphabetized. Oh, they just had to scroll through all. And again, it was you know two hundred people, but still, it was okay. Scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, there's your name. Ah, uh. yeah. I, I've heard horror stories of some conventions having their registration system online, and they mm-hmm. that they'll be able to connect to it from the convention center, <laughs> and then the internet goes down, and they're lost mm-hmm. and uh, that happens far too often. <laughs> yeah. I, I do panels at conventions every so often and every, every so often I get the, the question, um, uh, you know, does your presentation use any internet? I'm like, no, no, no internet. No, no, uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. People make that mistake once <laughs> and they can't get on the internet and they're left floundering. Then next time they prepare. <laughs> I was in one panel that was a a review of all the um, Super Sentai shows, and the entire thing was was links to YouTube videos. And guess what happened? You know, yeah. I, I've seen people submit panel requests. They say, "Oh, we're going to show these videos." And you ask, "Are the videos on YouTube?" Yeah. No, don't <laughs> don't do that. Local copies. Totally, totally. So so let's go back to um the, that New Hampshire con, like. What were the things that, that went wrong there that were kind of the inspiration for for, for Anime Boston? Uh, actually, not a lot went wrong there. That was, mm. to this day, it's one of my favorite conventions. It cool. was small and it organized fairly well. A lot of people complained about the dealer's room because there was really only one dealer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but for 330 people, yeah. Yeah. They had a good selection, at least. Um, cool. Yeah, uh, but their second year, they tried. Oh, yeah. They had picked uh, a date for 2002, and then Otakon moved their dates. They had announced mm-hmm. one date and then moved it on to the same weekend. So they decided, oh, well, everybody here goes to Otakon. So we'll cancel this and then we'll move it to a different date. But they never did. Uh-huh. And I don't know if part of that was just uh, lack of interest on the 
chairman's part or maybe him seeing, oh, well, there's this Boston thing coming. So <laughs> I don't know. Gotcha. Fair enough. What do you think are the like the biggest mistakes that cons make? Oh, there's so many. 